the air heavy with the weight of 40,000 years. Your torch casts shadows on the walls, and they're etched in stone are vivid animals. Bison horses, deer frozen mid-leap. Beside them, a handprint pressed into the rock by someone who lived when mammoths roamed. This isn't just art. It's a message from the dawn of humanity, a whisper from people who faced a world of wonder and terror. What did they want to tell us? Why did they paint scenes of beauty and brutality? Today, we're diving into the mystery of ancient rock art, uncovering secrets that challenge everything we thought we knew about our ancestors. Stick with me, this journey will leave you seeing humanity in a whole new light. Rock art isn't just pretty pictures on a wall, it's the earliest evidence of human imagination, a testament to our need to create, to communicate, to leave a mark. From the caves of France to the cliffs of Indonesia, these images tell stories of survival, belief, and conflict. But what makes them so gripping? They're not just art, they're a mirror reflecting who we were and maybe who we still are. Let's explore how these ancient strokes of pigment reveal the heart of humanity, starting with a surprising discovery that rewrites history. The story begins in places like Blombo's Cave in South Africa, where 100,000 years ago, early humans scratched patterns onto ochre stones. These weren't random doodles. Archaeologists found perforated shells, possibly necklaces, and bone tools for mixing pigments. These are signs of symbolic thought, the spark that separates us from other creatures. My take. This wasn't just art, it was a revolution. These people were saying, we can imagine a world beyond what we see. It's like the first time you drew a picture as a kid trying to capture something bigger than yourself. But here's the kicker, we weren't alone. In Spanish caves, 64,000-year-old markings suggest Neanderthals were also creating art. That's right, our cousins often dismissed as British had the same creative spark. This changes everything. Art wasn't a Homo sapiens exclusive. It was a shared human trait, a flame that burned across species. I find this humbling. It's a reminder that creativity isn't about being better than others. It's about connecting to something universal. When I first learned about Neanderthal art, I thought about my own creative struggles. Writing this script, I wrestled with how to make ancient art feel alive for you. It hit me, those Neanderthals painting in the dark were wrestling too. They were trying to say something just like I am now. That connection across millennia, it's what makes rock art so powerful. Now let's travel to Sulawesi, Indonesia, where 45,000-year-old paintings of wild pigs and hand stencils adorn limestone cliffs. Or to Australia's Kimberley region, where 40,000-year-old art captures the spirit of a rugged land. What strikes me is the consistency everywhere humans painted animals, reindeer, lions, mammoths, with breathtaking realism. Why animals? I think it's because they were life itself. They were food, danger, and awe all rolled into one. Painting them wasn't just art, it was a way to understand the world. The realism in these paintings suggests deep observation. These weren't casual sketches, they required skill and intent. To me, this shows early humans weren't just surviving, they were studying their world like scientists or poets. It's a reminder that curiosity is as old as we are. Next time you're stuck on a problem, think of those ancient artists patiently mixing pigments to capture a bison's curve. They didn't give up, and neither should you. But not all rock art is about beauty. Some images are raw, unsettling. In Peche Merle, France, a famous cave known for its spotted horses, there's a chilling scene, a stick figure human lying face down, pierced by multiple spears. Nearby, a broad symmetrical shape, maybe a bird, maybe a symbol looms over it. What's going on here? Is this a victim, a warning, or something else? To me, this image feels like a snapshot of conflict frozen in time. The spears, carefully drawn, suggest intention, not an accident, but a story. Some archaeologists think it's a literal event like a murder or execution. Others see it as symbolic, maybe a ritual or a myth. I lean toward the idea that it's both a real event wrapped in cultural meaning. Think about it when something shocking happens, don't we? Tell stories to make sense of it. This painting feels like that, a way to process pain. Let's look at another example. In Cognac Cave, a human figure possibly fused with a deer is stabbed by three spears. Another nearby shows a body riddled with projectiles, limbs splayed. 
These aren't abstract doodles. They're deliberate detailed. Why paint violence? My theory, these were messages, maybe warnings to rivals. Cross us and this is your fate. Or maybe they were records like ancient news reports preserving a moment of triumph or tragedy. To make this real, let's think about a modern parallel. In 2018, I read about a small community in Papua New Guinea where tribal conflicts still flare up. After a dispute over land, one group carved symbols into trees to mark their victory and warn others. It wasn't just art, it was a statement. I imagine the Peche Merle artists doing something similar, using their cave walls as a canvas to declare, this happened and we won't forget. These violent images shatter the myth of the noble savage, the idea that ancient people lived in perfect harmony. Life back then was tough. Small bands of 1530 people spread across vast landscapes faced constant challenges. Anthropological studies of modern hunter-gatherers show that 55% of killings stem from personal grudges, jealousy, betrayal, or insult. I bet it was the same in the Paleolithic. A stolen tool, a broken promise, small sparks could ignite deadly conflicts. Painting these moments wasn't just about recording, it was about healing warning or asserting power. Picture a Paleolithic band, maybe 20 people camped by a river. One night, a hunter accuses another of stealing his share of a kill. Words turn to blows, and by morning, one lies dead. The group shaken paints the scene on a cave wall, not just to remember, but to teach. This is what happens when we break trust. That's the power of art. It turns chaos into meaning. Rock art doesn't just show human conflict, it reveals our fragility against nature. In Lascaux, France, the scene of the well is haunting a bison gutted, stands over a fallen human with a bird-like head. A staff top with a bird lies nearby. Is this a failed hunt, a shaman's vision? The ambiguity is what makes it gripping. The bison wounded but standing is a reminder that nature doesn't always bend to our will. The human possibly dead shows how easily we can fall. I've had moments like that times when life felt bigger than me, like when I hiked a mountain and got caught in a storm. You realize how small you are. I think that's what the Lascaux artist was capturing, the moment when human ambition meets nature's power. Let me tell you about a friend, Mike, an avid hunter. A few years ago, he tracked a deer in the Rockies. He got his shot, but the deer wounded charged and knocked him down. Mike was fine, but shaken. He said it was humbling, Nature didn't care about his rifle or his plans. I imagine the Lascaux painter felt that same awe painting a bison that could still kill even when hurt. Another example in Roque de Serre, a carved stone shows a human fleeing a charging beast, maybe a bison. The tension is palpable, arms raised, body braced. I love this because it's so human. Who hasn't felt that adrenaline, that split-second choice to run or fight? To me, this isn't just art. It's a universal moment captured forever. These scenes remind us that Paleolithic life wasn't all triumphs. With only 4,000 people in Europe, 37,000 years ago, every loss mattered. A failed hunt could mean starvation. A charging animal could end a life. Painting these moments was a way to process fear, to honor the fallen, or to laugh at danger. Yes, laugh some scenes like a clumsy human in Malibu feel almost comical like an ancient cartoon of a bad day. Some rock art takes us deeper into the realm of belief. In Malibu, a carving shows a creature with a bison's body and a human torso, possibly wounded. Is this a shaman in transformation? A myth come to life. These hybrid figures fascinate me because they hint at a worldview where humans and animals weren't so separate. Growing up, I loved myths, stories of gods turning into animals, humans merging with nature. This Malibu figure feels like that, a bridge between worlds. It makes me wonder, what did these people believe? Were they praying to animal spirits or becoming them in rituals? It's a reminder that belief isn't just religion. It's how we make sense of the unknown. I once met a Lakota elder who described a vision quest where fasting and prayer brought him a vision of a buffalo. He said it wasn't just a dream, it was a connection to his ancestors. I think the Malibu artist might have felt something similar, carving a figure that blurred human and animal to capture a spiritual truth. Many cultures from Native American tribes to Siberian shamans 
use animal imagery and rituals. The Malibu figure with its wounds could represent a shaman's journey through pain to wisdom. Or maybe it's a warning. Even the strongest can fall. Either way, it shows a culture rich with meaning where art was a tool for exploring life's big questions. These belief-driven artworks challenge our modern view of primitive people. They weren't simple. They were philosophers in their own way, using art to grapple with mortality, identity, and the cosmos. Next time you're journaling or praying, think of those ancient artists painting their questions on stone. They were seeking just like you. So what does ancient rock art teach us? It's not just about the past, it's about us. These paintings from Blombos to Lascaux show that humans have always been storytellers wrestling with beauty, violence, and meaning. They remind us that creativity is our superpower, a way to process pain, honor life, and connect across time. Here's the lesson you have a story to tell, and it matters. Whether you're painting a cave wall or posting on YouTube, your voice is part of humanity's long, messy, beautiful journey. Don't let fear or doubt silence you. Those ancient artists faced a brutal world hunger, cold predators, and still chose to create. So can you. Hit that like button if this journey moved you and share your thoughts in the comments. What would you paint on a cave wall today? Subscribe for more deep dives into history's hidden stories, and let's keep exploring what it means to be human.